Hi, this is Jim. This video is about sail trim and I hope to give you a sort of a, a mental model for how to piece together all the bits and pieces of information you get when you're sailing with good sailors and give you advice on sail trim. Um, a lot of times they'll tell you to do this and this and this when the wind goes up and this and this and this when the wind goes down, but they won't tell you why. And so I'm going to try to give you the background as to why those directions make sense. And, and the basis for this mental model is this sort of interesting truth, which I found surprising, which is if the shape of the sails does not change and the apparent wind angle doesn't change, then the path the airflow takes over the sails, called the streamlines, do not change with wind speed. And so that, that's sort of weird. You'd think that, you know, as wind speed picked up, there's a lot more kinetic energy. It would somehow change what the air does going over the sails. But that's actually not the case, at least in the 1 to 100 knot range that we, we might sail in. If you're supersonic, it's a different ballgame. But in the subsonic regime, the basic airflow pattern over the sails doesn't change appreciably, regardless of the wind speed. Um, and that's a pretty profound thing. Uh, if you think about how the pressure is distributed on the sails, as long as the sail shape doesn't change, the, the pressure differential is located in the same places on the sails, regardless of the wind speed. And it's a very close approximation to say that the optimum sail shape and sail trim is a constant for any apparent wind angle regardless of the wind speed. And I know that sounds really weird, but let me take you through some examples and you'll see how that plays out and then it'll probably make some more sense. So let's say we have a sloop and we've done all sorts of computer modeling or something and we know the optimum sail trim at every point of sail. It looks something like this diagram. At um, close haul, the sails would be relatively flat and very close to the center line. And then as we uh, fall off, close reach, there'd be more curvature and the sails would be let out. And you know, beam reach, they'd be even more curved and let out further and so on until you get to sailing downwind in which you want really curvy sails and or white sails, you want to be sailing in a, in a wing on wing configuration. So, so that's our mental model of what optimum sail shape looks like regardless of wind speed and so let's imagine we're sailing close hauled in like 15 knots of wind and we're, we're bombing along the sails are really tight to the center line and then all of a sudden the wind falls way off we're down to like three or four knots of wind speed and at this point it really doesn't do any good to know that the optimum trim for close hauled is is really tight because you're not going to go anywhere with that light of wind. So in order to keep the boat moving and keep water flowing over the keel, over the rudder, you've got to fall off. So we'll fall off to a close reach. Well now, the optimum trim are the sails let out with more curvature. And so the crew scrambles around and you know releases backstay tension and outhauls, and maybe loosens the halyard and et cetera, et cetera, to get that shape. And now we can get the boat moving, even though we're in lighter winds. Um, and we're again, our goal in trimming the sims, the, the sails, is to get to that optimum sail shape for the point of sail we're going at. Okay, so now we're moving and the wind picks up a little bit, but we stay on a close reach. The mere fact that the wind picks up is going to increase the pre pressure differential on our sails and deform them. So if you want to keep that nice sail shape, the optimum sail shape, we've got to now make some adjustments to get back to the sail shape we had a minute ago in lighter winds. So now we start tightening on the, uh, the outhaul and maybe the halyard and the backstay tension and so on in order to regain that optimum sail shape. And so now we're moving faster, but still on a close reach. The helmsman say, well, we're going fast enough, let's go back up to close hauled. So now we have to retrim the sails for that optimum shape for close hauled. 
And so, so this is my mental model of what I'm doing as I trim the sails. It's, yes, I adjust the sails due to wind speed, but it's not because the wind does anything different as it passes over the sails at different wind speeds. It's because I need to make adjustments to get my sail shape back to where it ought to be for the conditions I'm sailing in. Okay, that discussion was for light and moderate wind conditions, but what about what happens when the wind really picks up? And you know that what I said before is still true. The optimum sail shape is, is the same regardless of the wind speed at any given apparent wind angle. The problem is you've got just too much sail up. It's gonna knock the boat over, um, or at the very least give you enormous leeway. And so what you wish you could do was just shrink the rig. I mean, the optimum sail shape hasn't changed, but we've got too much sails. I wish we could just shrink the rig. And if you sort of look at a diagram, imagining what shrinking the rig, if you could really do it, would look like, you can see it, it starts looking like, well, in this diagram, the, the um, shrunken rig looks a lot like a cutter flying just their smaller jib, the stay sail, and a double reefed main. And so, you know, designers of sailboats have given a lot of thought to how to quote unquote shrink the rig. Now, not all of us have cutters and we have to make compromises um, in order to keep sailing in stronger conditions. And so some of the advice you're gonna get, which is correct, about how to deal with stronger conditions, you need to recognize it's really a compromise. What, we're, what we'd love to be able to do would be to maintain that optimum shale shape and trim regardless of the conditions, but we can't physically just shrink and expand the rig at will. Um, so what are some of the things people will tell you to do? Well, one thing you can do is flatten the sails more than you would for that point of sail. And it's not optimum, but it helps control the amount of lift the sails generate. You can cut the amount of lift down by about 30% by doing that. You can't cut it to zero because even a perfectly flat sail, if it's got an angle of attack, will still generate lift. So there's only so far you can go with that. Another thing you can do, and we've all done, is just let out the mainsail. And you end up with this backwinded condition where you see a big bulge in the front of the mainsail where pressure from the jib is actually distorting the mainsail. If you think about that from a, a physics point of view, that's not a really good thing because think about the pressures on that part of the sail. It's physically pushing the boat backwards in that part of the sail's area. And it's also helping alleviate the excessive healing of the boat, which is a good thing, but it's obviously not what you really want to do. So, you know, I certainly do that all the time, and particularly in gusts to deal with, with high wind speeds. But if I'm going to be sailing for a long time in high, high wind speed conditions, then what I do is reef the sails. And in my boat, so this is a J32, I have about 60% of the area in the mainsail and 40% in the jib. And so the, the reefing order I do is I first put in a first reef on my mainsail, and then the second reef in the mainsail, and then finally I'll start rolling in the jib. In really strong conditions, up above, you know, like 35 knots, we end up sailing with just the double reef mainsail alone. And um, surprisingly, the boat sails really well um, in this configuration, including upwind. And this gets to another thing which confused me when I was learning to sail. A number of people told me that the mainsail doesn't do anything, it's just the jib that really pulls the boat along. And of course, there's something wrong with that, because first of all, there's boats like the Wiley Cat and the Nunsuch, which have only a mainsail. They're, they're, a, a, they're rigged without a jib. And these boats sail really well at all points of sail, including very well to weather. So I think where this misinformation comes from is that a lot of people, when they're, when they're first setting their, their sails, they'll set the mainsail right down the center line and maybe turn the engine off. Well, the, 
the boat in that configuration is not going to go very fast. Um, then they pull the jib out and all of a sudden the boat takes off. So they get the impression that the jib does all the work and the mainsail is doing nothing. So that's just wrong. What, what's happening here is when we have two sails up, the jib and mainsail are working together to create a compound airfoil that's very efficient. But if you're going to sail with just one sail, there's no jib in front of the mainsail to affect the airflow over the main. So the main really becomes your jib. And what you want to do is let the mainsail out. And a good first approximation is, let's say we're going close hauled, set the mainsail angle to the same angle that your jib makes relative to the center line of the boat. After all, the mainsail is the jib. And you'll find your, your boat, if it's like mine, sails just fine with, the, uh, with just the main out. Now we end up sailing in that configuration for a couple of reasons. One, as I mentioned, very strong wind conditions. That's a, a quite comfortable way for us to sail. Um, another reason is if we're sailing downwind and I can't get, let's say we're in a narrow shipping channel, I can't get um, a apparent wind angle so that the jib stays inflated. And then the best thing for me to do is just take down the main or take down the, the jib and sail on the mainsail alone. And this brings up another little facet of, of sail trim that I think uh, you might have missed. If you're sailing with white sails downwind, there are two efficient ways to do that. One is very efficient is to sail wing on wing, usually with a whisker pole winging out your jib. And that's an ideal configuration for going straight downwind. Both sails work very efficiently. Another good configuration is a broad reach. We're seared at like 120 degrees apparent. And now the, the jib and mainsail are let out and very curved, but they're both working together. The problem is, is if you fall off more from 120 degrees, the airflow from the mainsail starts blanketing the jib. And the jib actually is just becoming drag. You know, if you're in that configuration, you're better actually removing the jib, rolling it up or dropping it, uh, rather than having it flapping around behind the mainsail. Um, so let's say you want to get to some location, but it's not straight downwind and it's not far enough off the wind so you can sail on a broad reach. The efficient way to do that is to sail part of that route wing on wing and then jibe the jib and sail the rest of it in a broad reach configuration. Or you can do it the other way around. Sail on a broad reach with the jib still working and we get to the point where you can aim straight downwind, switch over to wing on wing. And that'll get you there a lot quicker than if you try to sail straight towards the target, but in a, in a apparent wind angle where your jib is blanketed. Okay, I hope these little tips were helpful for you. And um, as always, feel free to leave questions and comments uh, down below. Thanks. <music>